Hello everyone, welcome to another video. We've heard about this, uh, I don't know if anyone actually has heard about this, to be honest. There's a new partnership between Ripple and a company called Axelar, and I think it's a like a, a really different partnership than they usually have, and I want to get into all of it today. So I'm going to go through, just like I have in previous videos recently, I've made a report, so I'm going through it, I'm going to explain it very simply from like beginner level all the way through to now you know everything about this partnership that you need to know. Uh, so shall we do it? Let's find the page that I'm on. Okay, so let's do it. Let's check the microphone is working properly, which it is. Okay, so as I mentioned, Axelar have partnered with Ripple, or Ripple have partnered with Axelar. So in today's video, I'm going to go through what who Ripple are. I know that's elementary for many of you, but some of you are new here. Um, and the audience is growing, so thank you for subscribing. But because the audience is growing, I need to explain things entry level, build you up, educate you, and then at the end of the video, you're basically a, an expert, right? So we're going to talk about Ripple. We're going to talk about Axelar. We're going to talk about the technology involved. We're also going to talk about the implications for Ripple and the implications for XRP, because really, if you're watching these videos, you're probably invested in XRP and you want to make some money. Um, so let's get into it. So first of all, let's talk about Ripple and XRP. So Ripple essentially is a, a technology company that has aimed at revolutionizing international payments. And they've done that through blockchain technology. Now, the blockchain technology that they're using is called the XRP Ledger. They've made the XRP Ledger. And that's an open source blockchain. Um, and it basically allows for super fast payments without the need for a bank. And of course, that really is is cryptocurrency in general without the need for a bank but the differentiator here is that they have solutions for bank payments so when banks send their money they send massive volumes of money all at once and there are issues associated with that like it takes three to five days uh some transactions just fail like 20 percent of all transactions fail it's a nightmare um and then you know tie that in with the idea of you know us being in crypto, we kind of want to move away from the traditional financial system. And so Ripple and XRP kind of provide an avenue for that. The way that XRP is used on that blockchain is it's used as a bridge asset. So for example, in the in the new world, the new financial system, you'll be able to send dollars into pounds, like US dollars into British pounds, but you won't need to hold pounds if you're an American. You won't need to hold dollars if you're in England. You will just uh kind of convert your currency into xrp and then that gets converted back into the destination currency and so that would be anything to anything not just not just currencies like the japanese yen to dollars uh, australian dollars it would be uh ford stock into solana like it would be so it can be anything to anything that's the genius of kind of xrp so when we get into axelar Axelar is an interoperability platform. They're a company that really look towards connecting different blockchain networks and letting them talk to each other because they usually speak in different languages and share information very easily. They also share a lot more, but we'll get into that very soon in the video. Also, if you get to the end of this video, you're going to get a nice little gift. <laughs> really, really funny little end here. Uh, it's really good. I just, just, just get to the end. Um, and Axelar also protects messages moving between blockchains and complex security methods. And they have this thing called trusted checkers or validators, right? So really what's unique about this as an interoperability play is that they protect messages as well. Um, and I'm not going to get too deep into that because then it gets too complicated and we're not there yet. Um, so basically any apps that are built on a blockchain are called dApps or decentralized apps and so this lets so, so axelar lets apps that are built on the blockchain use stuff from other blockchains that is the key to this partnership i'm, I'm like this has blown my mind <laughs> um i'm going to leave it there because i want you to keep guessing um but you know you've got different blockchains and these blockchains use different things what if you could use those different things on other blockchains? Yeah, it's, it's fascinating. Let's get into it. So um, this partnership with Ripple. So 
if you imagine the the way Ripple and the XRPL connects to other blockchains is like a dirt road. Some of these roads don't even reach their destination. It's kind of just like it's choppy, they're bumpy. You might be able to get over it with a four by four, but it's just not like big companies aren't going to be using it because it's not smooth enough, it's not wide enough, it can't take the traffic, all of that kind of stuff. But what Axelar has basically come in and done is created a super highway, very wide, smooth, no bumps, just straight there, that connects XRPL to other blockchains. Right? So this is what we call interoperability, making each blockchain accessible by each other blockchain. So that's exactly what is done. Where, they have, where there were previously only disconnected roads that existed, they've constructed a super highway between cities, and those cities obviously being different blockchains. Now, this collaboration aims to enhance the utility of the XRPL by connecting it with Axelar's network, thereby enabling XRPL to interact with a multitude of other blockchains. Interoperability, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is a, like really big because it positions the XRPL as not as this like rigid system that has to stay where it is, but it makes it more versatile and makes it more integrated into other platforms. And it brings the XRPL into the broader blockchain ecosystem. So that's what kind of triggered this interest for me. But we want to get into what Axelar are doing. And basically what I've done is you can see you've got DeFi, stable coins, Web3 games, NFTs, wallets, and DAO governance. I was looking at all of those and I was thinking, okay, well, which which ones would would Ripple have joined for? You know, like what have Ripple joined? this partnership for? What are they getting out of this? And I've made two guesses, essentially. The two guesses are they really liked what they have called the GMP. And the GMP is a general message passing. Now, the GMP is a system. That, I'm going to forget the word system. Let's change that to system. Is a system that enables smart contracts across different blockchains to call each other directly. <laughs> right? So, this could, for example, allow a smart contract on Ethereum to request a transaction be settled on the XRPL using XRP to do so. So the whole world, the whole network of smart contracts on the Ethereum in the Ethereum net blockchain ecosystem. That's where smart contracts live, like that's the real home of smart contracts. This would allow those contracts to be settled in XRP. Let me just change the screen here to, for emphasis. This is what we want. <laughs> this is what we want. It's so good. So, you know, you have this whole world of, of, of smart contracts. And we've kind of been left out in XRP. And the XRPL hasn't really made any moves to be a smart contract platform. We've always had to kind of rely on maybe a side chain be built that has smart contract capability. But here we are. Ripple's making... A, a, a decided effort to partner with a company that basically allows smart contracts to run through X, the XRPL from other blockchains. And there's a word I'm going to say here that we're going to get to right at the end of the video, but atomically, we're going to get into that at the end. So let's keep, oh no, did I, sorry, I almost missed it out. So we've got GMP. I think that GMP system is really appealing to Ripple. And I also think cross-chain gateways are, are interesting to Ripple too. So that's Axelar's gateways are designed to securely transfer assets across blockchains. That was the bit I was saying earlier. This is super fascinating. Cross-chain gateways means the potential for XRP, the token, to move freely across various ecosystems, increasing accessibility and utility. Meaning this provides xrp the opportunity to move across different blockchains if xrp can move across different blockchains freely the access how, how it's accessed by developers the retail audience the the ethereum crowd the basically the whole blockchain crowd could now have access to xrp for its utility what i'm saying is is that xrp is the best for payments right it's just the best for payments if you try to use Bitcoin for payments, 
yes, it will happen, it will go, but it's not like you can't move trillions of dollars on it and and you know and do it fast or, or without like without slowing down the whole system um bringing everything down people ultimately i think no, let's switch the screen over here i think people ultimately naturally it's, it's just like um uh, survival of the fittest it's the same thing you've got an animal that's a bit more adapted to this specific use or this specific climate so it adapts better and it survives longer in that environment and so on and so forth. So that iterates over time. Now with technology, I think it's exactly the same. If you've got a, a platform that's really good at smart contracts, it will evolve and it will, it will just be better at contracts than everyone else because that's the system it lives in. But when you talk about payments, you know, payments can be broken down into like retail and retail payments and institutional payments and bank payments. Well, each one of those ecosystems, each one of those 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 traits, there will be assets that live in that in that space and they are better adapted, that is better for it. And naturally, people discover those things that are better adapted for those areas. And I think XRP is uh, that one for like the banking side of things. Although this move is very interesting because it puts XRP in the limelight for everything else, like not just bank payments, everything else. All of crypto can can XRP can be used, which is super interesting. Um, and so I kind of looked at this and thought, okay, so what does this mean for Ripple now? We we know what they're kind of there for, but what does that mean? What how can we use that? How do X how do how does the XRPL or Ripple use that to improve what they're doing? So I, I figured out two things: cross-chain payments and DeFi integration. So let's get into the first one. So Cross-chain payments means Ripple can leverage Axelar to facilitate seamless payments across different blockchain networks, expanding its reach beyond the XRPL. So now that it can connect with other blockchains, any really any other blockchain that is facilitated by Axelar, XRP can be used in those areas. Like we're expanding outside of the XRPL. Amazing. So I think that will... It'll, it'll mean more people get exposed to XRP. It means the XRP token and the XRPL can do more things. They can handle transactions across various networks. And obviously that makes it really attractive for global payments, regardless of whether, you know, a company is all about Ethereum. Doesn't mean XRP won't be used. Um, then it's also going to boost adoption because it's just going to be more interconnected. More developers are going to be interested in building on Axelar's system and businesses might even choose it for their blockchain. Um, you know, it, it just it, it puts it out there and increases adoption. And then also just in the world of of crypto, how it's changing and adapting and becoming better overall, it allows Ripple to stay competitive in more areas, I think. So not just payments, but also smart contracts and just settlement in general. So the other thing was DeFi integration. So now that we've... Um, now that we can integrate with other blockchains, we can now integrate even more with DeFi. And DeFi is decentralized finance, so finance that you do without the bank. Um, and you can do this. There's a whole world of things you can do. You can lend your money. You can borrow money. You can provide liquidity to get a yield. All of these things, you can do that in DeFi. And, you know, this, th this really blew my mind because we talked about a while ago and we talked in depth about AMMs. AMMs are automated market makers. And essentially what happens is you have your XRP, for example, you give it to a liquidity pool, like a, this, uh, this trading pair, basically, imagine it like that. You give your money, uh, and that is called liquidity, you've given liquidity, and in return for your liquidity contribution, you get a yield. So you get paid for your contribution. It's like an interest, you get paid an interest almost. And so we're really excited about AMMs coming to the XRPL because we're like, man, everyone in XRP is going to, gonna, you know, contribute to these AMMs. We're all going to get yield. We're going to have that passive income that we want. And, you know, the assets are safe and all that kind of stuff. Really interesting. And that was it. That was the like the, the scale of where our brains were. We're like, that is as far as it can go. We can take over the whole XRPL and everyone in XRP can contribute to these AMMs. But if we're integrating with other blockchains, time to change the screen again. If we're, if we're integrated with other blockchains, 
and these other blockchains are connected via Axelar's technology. And Axelar's technology enables assets from one blockchain to be used on another. Have we just invited in the possibility for all cryptocurrencies, all blockchains, to be able to contribute to XRPL AMMs? That sounded like a long sentence. I would probably, if you're new here, rewind it and listen to it again, because that was really, really like, there's a bit of a mind blow situation going on there. Um, so, you know, liquidity, so money, crypto from other blockchains could potentially be integrated with AMMs on the XRP ledger. So, you know, I was looking at this and thinking, you know, this is different. This is a different partnership by, by Ripple. I they, they, they've, you know, when they've bought companies before, they've bought custody, they've bought different, you know, they, you can see the moves they've made. But all of the moves they've made in terms of partnerships have been, we make payments faster, we can do this better, we can do this better. But this is a real focus on interoperability. We've seen that before. They've done things with interoperability plays. Um, but this is done in such a way where you can use, you know, th there's other things that are going on here that is that make it different too. Like the, um, it, it really broadens Ripple's use case significantly. Like we know the use case is, you know, to do payments and make payments fast and make it cheaper and it's more energy efficient. But this is expanding the use case into decentralized finance, borrowing, lending, you know, liquidity provision providing liquidity to these pools but bigger like bigger than bigger than what we expected so we can see that they've expanded into DeFi with this partnership you can see that there are increased use cases for um, enhanced liquidity for xrp um, and it seems like they're positioning themselves strategically for the future to be at the forefront of DeFi. like this is amazing <laughs> so i mentioned earlier there was a word called atomically um, and I want to get into that now because, you know, you'll see where my brain is coming from when I, when I complete my explanation here. So atomic settlement is when you're processing transactions, executing transactions, and all of the parts of the transaction are completed simultaneously, right? So it's almost like in quantum, oh God, I'm, I'm about to go into quantum physics here. <laughs> Sorry, but I'll make it very simple. Basically, they discovered in quantum physics that two, um, I think it was like ions or atoms. I think it was ion. Because ions are within. I don't know. I'm not that complex. <laughs> I'm not getting that far into it. So there are two, let's call them atoms. Two atoms could be completely tied together quantumly. Meaning one could one of these atoms could be on the other side of the universe to the other one but if you interact with this one it interacts with that one as well at the same time atomically happens at the same time it's fascinating there's loads of studies on this like um there's there's a study i'm going to start talking about this and it's not i i can't even complete my thought on it there's basically a study where if you light particles react differently if they've been seen versus not seen so light that is behind a wall is not interacting the same way as light that is hitting my eye. And so they basically discovered that two different atoms could react differently. Particles could react differently depending on whether they have been perceived. So based on that theory, you can have two atoms on the complete other sides of the universe. Basically, they are clones that react automatically at the same time even though the distance between them so with payments <laughs> that was a long explanation with payments you if you settle a payment at, uh, atomically it means the completion the the settlement of that payment from start to finish the whole thing happens all at once on both sides so you make a payment it's there that's atomic um Oh, I guess that does draw a parallel atom. Yeah, I didn't actually think of that. Maybe I'm silly. But you want these, these transactions to happen simultaneously. So 
This is crucial in the world of cross-chain transactions and decentralized finance, where transactions often span different ledgers and different blockchains, each with its own rules and processing times. So you want transactions to be settled from blockchain to blockchain, even though they speak different languages, you want it to be instant. And so I was thinking, well, what th this is basically what we're talking about here. We're talking about atomic settlement with Ripple and XLR. Um, and so really this is enhanced cross-chain transactions, so not cross-border, we're talking about from blockchain to blockchain transactions. Um, Axelar's technology can enhance Ripple's ability to perform atomic settlements across different blockchain networks. Um, and by using Axelar's cross-chain communication systems, again, I don't like the word protocol, systems, Ripple can facilitate transactions that involve XRP and other assets on various blockchains, ensuring that these transactions are executed atomically. So you could have XRP living over on Ethereum and you do a transaction and it just kind of atomically, atomically settles from almost as if it was on the XRPL, but it was on Ethereum. So the use cases for this are, are massive, absolutely huge. So I kind of came up with four things that I think, you know, the use cases for this technology are, and it might shine a light on where, where Ripple are going uh, in the future. So I think with the whole thing about swapping or exchanging cryptos across different blockchains, if that can happen atomically, bingo. Um, I think, you know, lending, borrowing and loans now became accessible across different blockchains to include XRP and the XRPL. Um, and you'll be able to use XRP, the token, to pay for things on different blockchains. Like I said at the early, earlier on, this app, this lets apps from one blockchain use stuff on other blockchains. I'm talking about XRP. You can use XRP on other blockchains. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, and then the last one, which I know is maybe not of interest to many people here, but I think there's a lot of, you know, NFT trading uh, implications of this as well. Um, so... Using XRP like this makes it a super handy tool in the online world, helping people do more things and safely across different digital places. Um, and so, you know, we look at this and we think, well, what's the impact on XRP? How's this going to impact XRP? And well, you know, there's a, there's a normal answer and I will give it because it's the true answer. It's the right answer. As XRP becomes integral to various applications beyond the XRPL, its price could see appreciation due, due to increased usage, liquidity, and visibility. Um, and let me talk about that a little bit more. So let's change the screen again. The only thing you need to increase the token's price... Now, nah, there's two things, I'm sorry. The two things you need to increase the token's price are it needs to be used. I'm holding up three. I mean two. So it needs to be used. So the asset needs to be used. It needs to have a utility... Um, that means, you know, is XRP really good at payments? Is it doing payments for big companies and banks? Yes. Okay. It's got a use. Next, what you need is a byproduct of that. The byproduct of that is other companies are looking at that going, oh, XRP is being used a lot. It's like really useful. We use it and it's really good. I'd imagine this is probably going to go up in value because it's so useful. Let's buy some. Maybe we can buy some so we can contribute to an AMM so that we can we can have a market maker and we can earn a yield or offer a yield to our clients. I'm talking about banks here. Um, and so they buy a bunch of it and they keep it. And then, you know, sorry, you've got another company that goes, well, that company just bought loads. Maybe we should buy some. And it starts this spiral where all of a sudden you've got less XRP in circulation. You've got less XRP to do an increasing amount of transactions, meaning the price goes up. So that's my that's my simplest explanation of um, of why this is such a big deal for XRP. It's the same with anything. If it if it increases the use cases for Ripple and XRP and the XRPL, it has a positive impact on the price of XRP because it starts the process of that cycle where people start grabbing it just to hold it. Um, we're just not there yet. That's why the price hasn't moved as well. There's a little thing there for you, right? So. I want to tell you all about something I've I worked on for ages. Um, I hope you enjoyed that video, by the way. C click subscribe if you enjoyed it, but stick around because if you haven't heard this bit, then it might be good. Um, this is the little treat that I told you about as well. So I worked for 
over a, over a, it took actually years of knowledge to put into my exit strategy workshop it basically gives you the step-by-step -step process on how to exit the market take profits effectively for for your desires and wants and needs not what somebody else is saying that you need so we give you the process of how to calculate what you need how to calculate how much risk you as a person can take um uh you know it's so there's so many steps to it it's a 90 minute live workshop that's that's been recorded already because the live is over, but you can watch it on demand. There's actually four hours of content in there and I'm actively going through right now and re-recording sections to give extra clarity um, and answer any other questions. So any questions you have about it can also be answered in video form. Um, we've had so many students. Um, I also offer a 30, oh, not 30 day. So basically if you take the whole course and do this whole thing, and it didn't provide you value, I will give your money back. It, I mean, I, I, out of all of the people that have taken this course, I've had one refund. And that refund was because the person thought it was a different course than it was. It was not because of the value. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think the statistics speak for themselves. The, uh, you know, the reviews speak for themselves as well. This thing is, is so highly regarded now. I've got a song. <laughs> I've got a song to play you at the end of this video now uh, about the Exit Strategy Workshop. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this we hilarious song. Out, ain't that so enough, so take my hand, don't you hesitate. I'm talking about a plan, it ain't too late. Click the link below, what a sight to see. A 90 minute workshop gonna set you free. She